and we're live, guys. Welcome to Whiskey Charlie, the War Game Chat, our live show on YouTube every month. I'm Mo from Mo's Game Table, and joining me tonight are my co-hosts, everyone's favorite Gimp with the Limp, the Gimpy Gamer, Nate Rogers. How's it going, Nate? Going great. Nice to see all of you. Good to see you. And the Wargaming Wizard from Oz in cold Austin, Texas, who has now changed out the background to a war game background. Kev Sharp <laughs> on the big board. How's it going, Kev? Hey. hey. How are you? Not too bad. Uh, a lot a lot better now that we have power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And no frozen pipes and shit like that. It's good. <laughs> yeah. That definitely was crazy last week. But uh, And tonight our special guest is Rob from the uh, big Rob's Tabletop World and Warren Pieces, Rob Warren, the big guy. And he has said, he's been threatening us that he's going to take over the show. And he wants to uh, kind of flip the script on us. But I don't think he's going to take over the show. I think we're in charge, Rob, not you. Exactly. <laughs> uh, my little fuzzy friend. So I think you're I in for a little bit of surprise. the hell just happened sip over <laughs> what are you doing dude <laughs> how did you pull that one off <laughs> it's called editing and magic oh <laughs> very nice very nice first of all everybody how are you it is your old pal rob from rob stable top world and the mighty worn pieces and of course we have our esteemed guest here mo kev and nate how are you guys today Fantastic. we're going to do something a little different Instead of you asking all the questions, Mo, I'm going to ask all the questions. So, uh, boy, look at all the people that we have in the chat already. John, how are you? Downriver Rick, Richard Kerr, Pete. What's up, my brother? Good to see everybody. So I'm going to start it off uh, with a couple things here. First of all, Mo, I'm going to open up. I'm going to open it up right with you. Now, listen. Wargaming has usually been, let's face facts, GMT has pretty much been the big dog in the in the yard, right? True. You, you would true. say that. Yeah. But a lot of companies have really been closing the gap there, okay? Mm -hmm. Out of these three companies, which one do you think is the better out of all of them and why? Okay. Lock and load. Flying Pig Games, and Compass. Mm, that's tough. I would have to say, of those three, I would have to say Compass has really improved the most. Uh, mm -hmm. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I, I think uh, they had some issues in the past. I know Kev knows about it as well as Nate uh, with some production issues, things like that. They've definitely improved on it, and everybody knows that GMT is the 800-pound gorilla in the room. But the way oh, I look absolutely. at Compass right now, the way I look at Compass right now is they're the 400-pound gorilla that's sitting on the couch there with a bag of cheeseburgers getting fatter every day, and quickly they're going to be up to five, 600 pounds, and then they'll start chasing down that 800-pound gorilla, but they definitely are on the right track. Ted, what do you think? Yeah, good question. I, I, I'm a huge fanboy for Lock and Load, you know, so uh, all the way back to when Mark Walker owned the company. So I, I think what David's doing online and with digital and the crossover between digital and physical is amazing. So I, 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 I think he's got the most potential, but I, I, you know, they, they probably struggle with scale a little bit. Right. Um, but other than that, I'd say it's probably compass. And then, you know, our, our fellas, uh, it was flying pigs was the other one, right? Yeah. Flying mm -hmm. pigs. Yeah. Flying pigs just does great high quality stuff, but that they're, they're still, I would still look at them as a niche player that are, that are doing, you know, cool, innovative things, mm -hmm. trying to grow, you know. Nate! Uh, I'm going to probably pair it Mo, because uh, Lock and Load is actually the one that gave me, like, my start. So when mm -hmm. I first got into it, they were the first company that reached out to me and, you know, hey, how can we help you get going? And then they were like, hey, we'll send you a couple things. I'm like, great, that's that's awesome. And then these two huge boxes show up with like the entire lock and load tactical line in it. And the wife looked at me and she's like, yeah, this is going to start being a storage issue. I can see this already. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, yeah, it, it was downhill from there. I always said that I thought that David did a, 
excellent job because he reached out to people like us and oh it's not just like who's putting out good word about him he yeah. wants to touch base with everyone who's reviewing wargaming stuff so at mm-hmm. least they've talked to him you know have an impression with him like hey how can i help you guys out and i think that's great because youtube i think is awesome for marketing for wargamers mm-hmm. uh, so they've done great as far as that's concerned and he's right the the digital stuff that kevin referred to because i've helped out a lot with that i did the uh boot camp series for their digital game um victory and glory recently Mm -hmm. so like that game although i'm not big into civil war so that was a little bit more of a a struggle for me but the game's good and compass is definitely the most improved they have dramatically improved their quality from the uh, the time period that i've started playing war games i can't really comment on flying pig because uh i haven't i don't think i've ever played one of their games uh, Mark Walker, if you're out in the audience, do me a favor. <laughs> yeah, it'll get played. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna point this next one to you, Nate. All right, listen, and, and, and I'm not blowing smoke up your back ends. Listen, the three channels that are on here, okay, as far as Gimpy, Mo's Game Table, of course, Big Board Gaming. You're a big guy, anyways. Probably three of the most underrated war gaming channels out there okay uh you know especially over the last year you know with 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 everything going on i've had a a real lot of time to take and look at each of you guys individually and i scratch my head why these channels aren't a hell of a lot bigger so what i want to post to you nate is it fresh does it become frustrating when when you're putting out the quality work that you have to be being a youtuber and wondering, you know, you, you know, what you're not doing, or, or are you reaching enough people that you feel that war gaming is such a close knit thing? Is it frustrating that that you don't progress as much as as you would like? Well, I mean, you know, you can look up the analytics, right? You can pull up your right, analytics and, yeah. and see how well you're doing. And, and the I, one... I don't mean that as a slight, because I think no. when when I look at these three channels. I go, okay, okay, you know, I look at my analytics and I, I scratch my head. You know, my point is, is that <laughs> you got, I really feel that you guys should be a lot bigger than you are. Huge. It, it takes, a, it takes a lot of work, right? Yeah. So you look at the analytics and the one thing that I've noticed is mine has always been going up, right? Mm-hmm. It might take a little while, but it, it's been getting there. And I noticed there were uh, moments that tipped me over the edge. The first time I was mentioned in a GMT article, mm-hmm. the uh, the newsletter they put out, I was looking at the little analytic trend and it just shot straight up right after that uh, piece came out. So mm-hmm. it helped when other people mentioned me. Like I tried to kind of make friends a little bit with people who were a little bit bigger than me. Someone right there might be named Rob. He's bigger than all of us combined. Well, that's the thing. I could always track it after I got mentioned by some of these people. I would see the bump because the you know mm-hmm. uh, subscribers came over. But I always knew I would never be huge. I never expected to have millions of people or even hundreds of thousands on the channel, and I was fine with that because mm-hmm. the the hobby that I'm doing, mainly solitaire war gaming stuff, I expanded more into miniatures recently. But solitaire war gaming is not huge to begin with but there are enough Mm -hmm. people that are into it. So I'm wanting to cover the topics that I enjoy covering and whoever wants to come check it out can, can can check it out. You know, it's not going to be the the country. I'm not talking about politics or food, something that everyone is going to be related to in some way, shape or form. It's already a small hobby and I'm covering a small niche of a small niche hobby. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to say another thing here too, is I've never seen any one of you guys sell out. And what I mean by that is people go into chats and say, oh, hey, I have a board game channel, or my channel doesn't do this. Or I've never seen any of you ever sell out. No. You know what I mean? You do I your thing. Once. Huh? I tried to sell out once, but it didn't work out. Nobody bought no, any I know. <laughs> and that's why I said it. <laughs> you just went off. You know, I'll take time, and I'll mention, because of the respect I have for all three of you, to be honest with you, and, and, and the job that you do, 
you guys do things a lot better than I do. Okay. I, I, I mean, I really enjoy watching a lot. Thanks, Your Paul. unboxings, Mo, are ridiculous. Kevin, I can't even comprehend. First of all, I don't have the brain power to do this, some of the games that you do. Okay. I, I mean, it's just it's amazing. And Nate. You don't see the off camera stuff, man. It's all good. Trust me. All right. That's that's about it. That's it for my niceness. Okay. Now it's time to. We can't keep trick. up with your, uh, your quantity, though, dude. The amount of videos you put yeah. out in a week just blows it away. Anything that I'm trying to do. And I think I, I don't want to make this about me, but I, I'll tell you the only thing why I, I, I make so many videos. I always believe that if you have something to say, get it on at that moment. Don't try to script it. Don't be this. Don't be right. that. Because people know when you're a phony, five foot four, little fat, you know, nothing. Okay. They'll figure you out eventually. Dude, I'm six one. What That's the hell? Why I said, it sounds like I'm a meatball. I'm not talking about you guys, obviously. It sounds like a meatball. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, Spicy meat. The, the, the thing is, I, I, I try to be, I hate that word real. I just be myself, number one. Right. Number two, the minute I don't have anything to say, I'm not going to be making any videos. It does help, though, doing the live videos, the structure, the way you do it. Because once you're done, you're done. You don't have to go back to post mm -hmm. editing and adjust the audio uh, or video yeah. or any of that <laughs> crap. So every time so, I... I yeah, every time I record ahead. something, I've got to go back and do all that crap. So there's a lot more hours before I can actually get it to the upload point. Yeah, Nate, that's I, th I think that's part of the challenge, right? I, that's why I'll do one cut stuff and just do it, and it is what it is, and then that's it, and then I'll do live stuff because I can't edit it later and just mm -hmm. be done with it. But you're doing tutorials and really – you're actually helping people as opposed to me just playing a game you're helping people learn so it's got to be more accurate and edited mm -hmm. and correct yeah so don't say yourself short you're a great slouch <laughs> <laughs> well believe it or not i have videos filmed all the way out to march 29th wow <laughs> nice like you know i do I, I do three taped videos a week and then i'll fill in the rest of the week if i get something in my head and I just try to have those three videos a week and then build out from there. Right. And I try to stay ahead of the game. Can you send me a few of those for when the wife's in the hospital and I'll just edit my head on your body? Oh, abso absolutely. Just I mean, absolutely. Just use it as filler? I mean, you are, anyways, at a slim, trim, lean, ripped, two... <laughs> what's that? Oh. 185. No. Very nice. No. <laughs> uh, Kevin. So yes, sir. Uh... <laughs> Someone comes up to you with a very old and vintage bottle of whiskey. Oh. And says, "I will give this to you, but you need to share it with just one designer. Mm. Who would that be?" Joe Valkowski. And why? If it was, well, so if it's not him, it's Frank Chadwick probably, but uh, <clears throat> I, Frank, I, good choice. Yeah, I just went through this ex exercise about four or five years ago, started really paying attention to design, more attention to designers. And every time I, I looked at a box of a game that I really liked, it was a Belkowski game or a Belkowski series. Mm -hmm. Great campaigns in the American Civil War. Uh, uh, um, the Light Division and all these other titles and series and things he's been involved in and, and written books as well, you know, D-Day games. And I'd, so I, he would be a guy I would like to understand how he goes about designing his games, playing, you know, coming up with the history, we're doing the research and all the rest of it. He's, he seems like a very, very interesting guy. And he's a pretty tight rules writer. He just has a really crappy map artist and developer. So, you know, and over in the past, right? Because I haven't seen a game from him in a long time. Yeah. Nate, I'm going to throw that the same thing to you, but you could put, um, you know, Natty Light in place. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go with the low blows. Um, I would have to put... <laughs> Either John Butterfield, just because I like his his game designs, like Enemy Action Ardennes is one of my favorite um, uh, solo games. I just love the the system he crafted for that. 
so well made with the counters, mm-hmm. uh, the chip pull for the damage, or uh, Fabrizio and the other gentleman, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, who was involved with 1985. Tony. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, 1985 Under an Iron Sky, because that one is just a work of art. I think they did an excellent job on that game. So mm-hmm. in depth, you can tell that it was a labor of love, that it was well crafted, and they put a lot of thought into it. They didn't just try to willy nilly a combat table and throw some dice. They really worked at that thing, and they they know it. You know that the, that is that crafted, handcrafted war game. Really, really, really good game. And that's I even mentioned that when I talked about the game, that I think part of the price just came with the the sheer amount of hours that they had dedicated to getting that to to the table so yeah those Mm -hmm. would be my people mo take it home um i'm gonna keep it really short and sweet it would be mark herman for the simple fact that you get mark drinking he'll tell even better stories than he does when he's sober so definitely Mark Herman. (laughs) i thought that was uh uva (laughs) uva is another great one too if you can get both of them together forget it just just share that bottle out and you can just sit back and enjoy the stories all night long that's great. I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, let's see. Because I'm trying to, I'm throwing you softballs right now. WBC or Historicon, Mo? WBC because I've not been to Historicon. Okay. And I have been to WBC and I liked it there. I like the format. I like the size. I like the array of war gamers there. And I like the fact that the, the whole vendor hall is all war gaming and mm-hmm. pretty much. Yeah. Not not all, but a lot of vendors are there. Not vendors. Uh, a lot of the publishers are there, and they're showing demos of their games, so you can check out stuff there that you can't elsewhere. And Historicon, I can't attest to that one if it's the same or equal on equal footing as that. But uh, it is one I'd like to go to sometime. Mm-hmm. But I, for now, I'd say WBC. Uh, to add a little addendum there, do you think it'll happen this year? WBC. Yeah. I personally don't think any conventions will happen this year. If they do, it'll be late in the year. and It'll be very small uh, groups of people because I think this whole thing is still going to be a mess and travel restrictions will be in place. It'll be, you know, people will be hesitating to travel. People are going to not want to go to conventions and have to wear masks and things like that. So I'm not really counting on anything happening this year. I could be wrong, but I'm not counting on it. All right. I'm going to twist up the question a little bit. Nate, um, the same kind of thing, but what is the best convention you've ever been to? Uh, War game to, convention. Have to be WBC, because that's the only one I have been to. Uh, <laughs> ah. uh, unfortunately, <laughs> like... That's why I twisted up. <laughs> right as soon as I started going to conventions, you know, I got big enough to actually go. It was right after that that COVID kicked off, so there was a couple that I missed. <sighs> but it seems like I went, you know, and I met Mo there, and everyone knows Mo. Everyone knows Mo because he was taking me around. Hey, this is so and so. Hey, this is so and so. Like to every single person that I met. And I can actually put this out there. I am guarantee you the only guy who has a wife that's begging him to go to a war gaming convention because she is. <laughs> she's still talking to me about it. She is begging to go. She's like, tell me they're having it this year. I really want to go. She loved the That's place. Awesome. The kids had a great time. They had a little uh, package deal you could get where they could ride the ski lifts and play the mm-hmm. games and do all that cool stuff. So they had a great time. And then I got to do my thing. Mm-hmm. So she was begging me a few weeks ago. She's like, come on, tell me they're having it this year. I'm like, I don't know, honey. Well, do something about it. Put it out on your channel. Tell them they need to do it. I'm like, yeah, they're going to listen. I'll do what I can. <laughs> Ken, same question. <laughs> No idea, man. I, uh, I I've only gone to small cons. I I haven't never been to WBC or any of that. So I've been to uh, a couple, of, uh, one in Seattle a couple of times, and then a one called uh, MonsterCon, which actually is happening in uh, April, I think, uh, this year. Right. And that's planned. There's forty or twenty, maybe it's twenty. I don't know. It's either twenty-seven or forty-two. That those two numbers seem to be in my head. So, yeah, I'm a small con guy. I don't, I don't like the big things. I'm not really just a money pit for me in terms of spend. <laughs> I, 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 I agree wholeheartedly, yeah. especially, you know, I found after being to all the big cons for, for years now that I find the little wargaming cons are the ones I like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
but also with the, almost the strangest people too. Yeah, I go to play. I go to play, right? So I'm right. not. I don't really film, or I don't. You know, take. I, I'll ask if I can take pictures and stuff like that. But I, I, I won't do any sort of live streaming or anything like that, unless I was I'm asked to or invited to, which I haven't been. So yeah. No. The it's great a, Herman Lutman, and we nobody picked him. Nobody picked him as the best. I'm we're saving him for him. better questions later. Yeah. 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 Is yeah. is Historicon the ones in the one that's in California? No, no. no. It's actually um is that well, Pennsylvania? It, it it was in Pennsylvania, then it moved I, I think it was in um Virginia and then it moved back to Pennsylvania. It, it's been bouncing back and forth. It, I, I've been to it twice, and it's 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 a very good war gaming con, um, very unique. Is um, it about the size of uh, WBC, like the amount of people that are in attendance? You would say? No, I I, I would say it's smaller. It's it it used to be one of the biggest war gaming cons. It used to be Historicon, and then I, I believe Origins was no, yeah, Origins was was a, a a strict war a war gaming con those two back in the day historically were your two biggest cons ever well i think kev would you know, probably it, be right then you know that those would be more fun to go to than something like origins what it is now or some of the others because it's just or so origins. packed origins is on life support right at this moment lancaster PA, no where that's at yeah yeah lancaster okay all-time greatest. Jeez. Oh, Herman Lovin. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Herman oh, Lovin. No, I, I'm sorry. I should have answered it correctly. Who is Herman Lovin? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, now, now, Kevin, I'm going to start off with you. All-time <laughs> greatest D-Day game. D-Day game. You know, I think for, for monster playability, Battle for Normandy, hands down. That's a that's a great choice, Mo. Mo Lama Bamba. Uh, D Day to Omaha Beach. Another interesting choice. Why? Um, I, I like that whole Butterfield system. It's really uh, challenging. It, you mm -hmm. really feel like you're struggling to survive yeah. and struggling to get the objectives. And I think that's a, a great challenge. And you can't win. It's one of the, I mean you can, but it's not one of those games where if I do this and I do this, I'm guaranteed to win. No, mm -hmm. every time it's a struggle and you really start getting to feel that desperation of what it's like to make an amphibious assault. Right. And I think that is just a really cool thing because not only you got to get your, get your troops ashore, but then you got to get them up the beach. Then you got to take objectives and it's not easy. <laughs> you get a better uh, appreciation for the difficulty involved in amphibious operations, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Nate, yeah. clean it up. Ditto Mo. I mean, he took my answer <laughs> like, <laughs> words right out of my mouth come on i i said butterfield earlier that's uh that's definitely gonna be my uh, my d-day cool. choice <laughs> all right um all right i'm gonna put this one to you nate because you got out easy all right <laughs> a benchmark war game that you judge all other games to you boot meaning your 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 war game that you consider your holy grail and that you can when you play a war game well it's not as good as blank thunder in the east thunder and the east well, hmm. I was just yes. looking at that the other day really why yeah. and and that's strange because for me i'm not a big eastern front fan like at all i like the the western front I, I just don't like the Eastern Front. Don't get me wrong. It's great for tank battles and curse and all the <laughs> other crap. Mm -hmm. uh, I just like uh, the American fighting side versus the Russian fighting side. Because, you know, American. Mm. Uh, but yeah, Thunder in the East, I just thought it was so well crafted. Uh, the thing they did with the supply dice, right? So you could have the yellow dice that would go on the cities and it helped you when you were looking at it see what roughly your supply radiuses were the fact that the units could break down i liked how i compared the the force pulls to a cash register the the change mm -hmm. boxes because when you were exchanging units like you could break them down from larger sizes to smaller sizes or or beef them up 
that uh, it was like a cash register that had to be square at the end of the night. So whatever you took out, you had to put it back in from the board. But the force pool, it's like you were buying new stuff, so you were actually adding that to the board. I think everything that they did with that game was about streamlining the rules for a monster game to be very easy to play. And it's it's not a full-on, like, huge monster game, but for a game of its size to be as streamlined as they did, I thought they did an excellent job with it. So it's like running a bread shop? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking. I don't know. I'm it sounds like a retail operation. <laughs> I, I talk this game up a lot, but I just think they did a, a really good job with it. Even the rule book was a breeze to, to read. Everything oh. just clicked. Most rule books, when I'm reading them, I have to read them once and then sit down with the components and read it again like, okay, so that's what they meant. And finally, at some point, the brain starts to comprehend. With this, it was like, oh, ABC, it's just that easy. And roll the dice. Even the um, the air support, and I know they're, with their newest game that, that involves the Mediterranean that's going to be coming out, uh, I think naval components are going to be handled a similar way. But when you brought in your air support, it just kind of changed the combat dice or you were adding dice to the ground combat that's already going on. But it was all done with simplistic symbols on the counters. And it made it really easy to understand. Nate, uh, Nate uh, you said that they're coming out, that they're coming out with a sequel. I, 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 that was by Victory Point Games. They're not doing it anymore. Who's, who's now putting it out? That's GMT. Gonna, yeah, GMT. They're going to be oh, putting is it, it out. DMT's taking it over? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, wow. I I talked to uh, Alan about it a little bit, and he had reached out to me, and then we kind wow, of lost on first name basis. Alan. Yeah, like, like that, baby. Want his phone number? <laughs> but uh, I, I'm looking forward to this one. I, as much as I love the Eastern Front with the section they're mm-hmm. going to be covering now, my only concern is the fact that it's going to be coming with a new publisher. How compatible are the components going to be because uh, are they using the same counters the same maps uh are, no, how's this gonna be the same map man no so no nate i'm gonna I, i'm gonna do a follow-up here because john asked nate how many times have you played it and or how far into thunder in the east date wise have you played 43 uh, question mark oh there it is it's right on the bottom now. yeah i can't remember how far i played i thought i said it with better passion now I played some off camera before I packed mm-hmm. it up because I ended up doing, I think, a, a 12 or 13 part video series on the game. But mm-hmm. because of its size, you're you're covering such a huge swath of land. It's hard oh, to do it. Man. And I was I was showing everything. Right. And even the combat system was so cool because it had little arrow counters you could put down <clears> to show your odds. I love that. Man, it was so great. God, I want to pull it out again. Damn it. You're killing me. Uh I played it just a little bit longer, and that's the biggest pain of having a YouTube channel is I can't play necessarily what I want to play because mm-hmm. if I didn't have a channel to worry about, that would have just stayed on my table and I would have played through the entire campaign. But since I it took up my entire table, usually I can fit a couple of war games on it. This thing took up the entire five foot by six foot table, so I couldn't leave it up as, as long as I wanted to, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Mo, same question. Uh, I suck at these things, and I see, I hear echo. Does anybody else hear echo? I, I've been getting that a little bit here, or there. Okay. I think it's just a little bit okay. of internet lag. Okay, now it's gone. Well, now it's back. But anyway, I, I'm I really suck at um, picking top three, top fives, number ones, anything like that. That's why I don't do those videos because I find my tastes will change. No, I know. That's why I'm saying it's, it's hard to nail it down to a grill game for me. So I Mm -hmm. would say currently I would be between two, one system and well, I guess they're both systems, uh, world of war 85 and next war, um, because world of war 85 is just a great system and it's going to build out to a really big library. Mm -hmm. I know Kev's a big fan of it as well. And uh, as so is Nate, and it is one of those things that you can play and, and you are as well. You can play these big pitch battles fairly quickly, you know, and you can yeah. see the wrecks all over the battlefield and you can get a sense at how devastating modern combat is. Mm-hmm. And similar with the next war series, just on a different level, uh, the world of War 85 series is, is the popcorn version type of game like that. And next war is more of a, I don't want to say study simulation, 
Uh, that's it's not at that level, but it's it's definitely a level above. A study mm-hmm. simulation would be like less than sixty miles, things like that. That's more yeah. where you're studying, the, you know, that whole uh, era and that conflict. But um, I think the next war series is great because it's got that intro basic rule set that you can really dig into and have a lot of fun with. Yeah. And then it's got the advanced rules, which take it up five more notches. Just when you think, wow, this is pretty cool, and there's a, there's a good deal to wrap your you take it up to the next level and you bring in naval and air and things like that. And that's when you start going, wow, I really screwed up on that. I committed too many air forces and now they're all splashed. <laughs> now I've got nothing for strikes, things like that. And you learn the hard way on how you have to husband those forces. And you really do get a really good appreciation of how bloody modern combat would be, how effective our platforms are at killing each other. Big Kev, who's big at everything. Take us home. <laughs> Big at everything. Wow. Well, so I would probably agree with Mo from from the World of War and maybe Lock and Load uh, tactical. I, if we look at most played, I've played those games probably the most. But when I sit, lately, I've been going through this uh, African campaign thing. So every time I play an African themed game. I compare it to DAC, and I know DAC 2 is huge, and it's OCS and all the rest of it, but it's actually, you can play that thing on some some of the camp, some of the small campaigns and the scenarios on two maps, which is very doable, and there's not thousands of counters like, uh, you know, like Thunder, Thunder, even Thunder in the East has hundreds and hundreds of counters and all those information counters, and all the case blue and all that sort of stuff. This thing, you might have a couple hundred counters on the board and you can have a blast and play with a buddy. Well, I've been playing for 18 months with a guy once a month. We're just getting two or three turns done and we're going through the whole thing from 41, 40 to wherever we end up. You know, it's pretty awesome. So I would say DAC 2 as my my sort of go-to. Oh my gosh, is it as good as that? or to be the modern stuff, uh, World of War and Next War and Lock and Load Tactical, stuff like that. You know, we did miss one. We did miss one. We did miss one and John brought it up for us. What's that? (laughs) 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 That's funny. Exactly. (laughs) Best war game of the year. Yeah, Yeah. so uh, that was a long answer, but that's probably, you know, probably it. No, it's a great answer. Kev, I'm going to come right back at you. Uh-oh. Okay. Avalon Hill, SPI. Which one would you bring back, and what SPI. game would you want to see back? SPI. And the first game I would bring back would be Mark Herman's Next War. I would like to see him fix that sucker, right? And mm-hmm. War, on, War on the Pacific, and actually make that thing work, because it's a huge monster that sucks. Sorry, guys. Uh, it's coming back. Is yeah, it really? No, no, no. That specific. No, that's some um, VG. You know. So you know, if, if Avalon Hill included Victory Games, mm. then I'd probably say Victory Games because Victory Games has such a great library of amazing titles. So mm-hmm. depending on what you mean. So SBI, but there's so many dogs in SBI. <laughs> You know, from from there's so many just crappy games, right? But then there's just classic nostalgia classics. So I'd love to see someone just get started and just repeat the games as they are, clean clean things up a little bit, and tr- don't try and fix it, please. All right. Yeah. Mo, same question. I agree with the idea of next war bringing that back because that would be really cool to see come back, especially now with everything that has uh, become really popular right now with. World War Three, the hypothetical yeah. World War Three, yeah. it is something that is, uh, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way because I love hypothetical World War Three. It's it's almost like zombies were for the hobby gaming side for for a long time. Right. It was the thing. It was the thing. And right now, it's World War Three is the hot thing for everybody. Yeah. So, and it's going to stay that way for a couple of years. And I think mainly the reason that is is because. The age of the gamers now, people that are our age uh, served at that time, and that would have been our war if that had happened. And now, thankfully, it didn't happen, but now we can play it out on, on, on a tabletop, you know, and see. And especially now, we can go with better accurate data than we had at that time, because the Soviet threat briefs back then were, oh, they're these big, monstrous, you know, 
dangerous guys. And now we're realizing that mm, they weren't as dangerous as we thought. And granted, we weren't as effective as we thought either at times. And, and it is, is amazing because the entire 80s decade, you saw the rise and decline, the rise of NATO and the decline of the Warsaw Pact over that decade. And the later in the decade it went, the easier it would have been for NATO to win. So I think something like that would be great to revisit. And uh, and if you, you know, we brought in back uh, victory games, then I would have to add in Vietnam 65, 75, which is still available on the secondary market, but see yeah. it updated would be right. kind of cool. Right. Nate Rogers, uh, just like Steve Rogers. I'm going to I'm gonna go with the, uh, the collective uh, SPI. Uh, I'm not going to go with next war though. I would have okay. to go with war in Europe, that combination for the flat packs of oh. war in the East and war in the West. Mm -hmm. Good uh, one. Because for me, that's like always been one of my like grail games that I'd like to get if I ever got a chance to get it. And every time I've seen it, it's been like bit up and I just haven't been able to spend that kind of money. Not with a bunch of young kids running around on a game. So I would like to see them bring it back so I could actually, you know, get a copy for under a billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Okay, uh, Nate, I'm going to stay with you. Okay, if there is one thing that you could have changed in your channel, what would it have been? I would have started it earlier. Like, way, way earlier. I actually talked to the missus about this, too. Because uh, back when YouTube was first starting out, you know, and mm -hmm. there weren't as many channels, were as many people to compete with. And mm -hmm. if I had known then what I know now, the whole subscriber count thing that we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. uh, I could be running it, right? It could be hundreds of thousands or, you know, I could be the name. In, wow. In the game. Yeah. I'm just saying. Or at least, or at I least could be Mr. More. YouTube. Oh, at no. At least I, 11 more than now. <laughs> oh, I was, I was telling her flat out, I would take advantage of her back when she was 20 years old. Like, hey, get on screen with me. Wear that low-cut shirt, too. I thought that was the whole point of getting married. You're supposed to take advantage of her, aren't you? We're getting ready to have a baby. I, I, what, a, <laughs> what a corporate chill he would have turned out to be. <laughs> what no, are we talking about? Oh, my look, God. No, look at it, though. Like, the guys that have been around longer than us all have the, the bigger channels to compete with. The guys that I got into wargaming watching, you know, are the ones that have tens of thousands of subscribers, and they're hard to compete with. And it's because no, they have a not in wargaming that nobody watching. has tens of thousands. What are you watching, bro? What, 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 uh, Marco, he was wargaming, but he uh, has something uh, like Marco seventy. Doesn't, Marco doesn't count, right? He's not a wargamer. I mean, he do, he plays war. Well, he presents war games and he plays Euro games. But he's not a wargamer, mate. And he and he's the only one other than Rob that I know that's got a substantial. No, uh, you know. players eight. They uh, they broke ten k, so they're doing good. Okay, so I mean, good for them. I don't I don't watch any. So, so. Show me the tens of thousands. Yeah, they, I mean, you can get hundreds, bro. Uh, It'll never. Happen. What I'm saying is, like, I've also broached out so and summoned a miniature gaming as well. And if I had been doing that ten years ago. I would mm -hmm. have a lot more a lot more videos yeah. up, a lot yeah, sure. more games covered, stuff like that. So I just would have started yeah. earlier than I did, into yeah. a less congested field. Do you, th do, you, do you think you would suffer from burnout? Well, if, for me, I mean, I kind of turned this into you know my job because uh, mm -hmm. the whole being blown up thing took away the <laughs> being able to drive and go to work thing. So I had to have something to fill mm -hmm. my day. So for me, I go in my office, I work on games, I work on recording and editing. It gives me something to do, a way to be productive since I can't actually leave the house. I, I love it. And if I get let, burned let just, out, I have to do is stop. Right. Let me just follow up on one, on one thing. Has it taken the fun out of the games for you? A little bit. A little bit? Because the choice goes Do you goes walk away. a line with it at times? I have to make sure every now and then I cover something that I want to cover versus something I have to cover, right? Because I've hit that point where people are 
sending me stuff and they're like hey could you cover this or could you talk about this and it's great like hey i know i'm succeeding because i've got companies that are actually reaching out to me and i love that mm -hmm. any companies that are watching hey it's in the in the description <laughs> come check me out but uh if i only covered what they wanted to <laughs> we're done <laughs> <laughs> if I only if I only covered just the stuff that they wanted me to cover, it would burn out really quickly. So I, that's why I have to throw in stuff that I want to cover at the time, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the it still has to be fun to do instead of just a chore and just a job. I got to have yeah. enjoyment for my hobby. Kev, same question. Um, I don't know what the question was. Uh, what, what, well, uh, what, if you had to do it all over again, what would be the one thing? Oh, what would I do? You know, I actually, I don't think I would change anything. I, I started this on a lock. I just did it. I do it for fun. Mm -hmm. I do it to play my games and share. And I, I don't really understand how it all kind of snowball, right? Just things happen, right? So mm -hmm. I, I like the way my channel is. I don't like feeling obligated to play stuff. So when folks send me things, I really appreciate it, but it, I try and let everybody know that it's on my timetable, not theirs. So if it's Kickstarter or something like that, you better get it to me really early and let me know so that I can do something with it if I can. Uh, but I've sent games back because I it's like, this is not me. I can't, your space game, sorry. <laughs> Send it to some, I'll mail it to somebody for you, right? You know, because I want to be respectful of the designers and stuff. But no, I wouldn't change a thing. I, I love it just the way it is. Mo, clean it up. Well, I think the first thing I would do is uh, would have got, I, I did written reviews for, well, I did video game reviews years ago on combatsim.com and then I did reviews on another video game site. Now it was all just video games. And then I got into board game reviews, written reviews because video was very difficult for me to do. I didn't even have a, a camera at the time. I had an older camera and that's what I started with. And one thing I would definitely want to do differently if I could was maybe monetize early, get a couple hundred bucks, flip it into Bitcoin when it was only a couple hundred dollars, have <laughs> all that money right now. <laughs> and, and then, then I'd buy it. Exactly. Then I'd buy it. Then I'd buy a house with a better room that was like soundproofed and everything. So I can go in there and I can actually, shoot video and not be interrupted by my wife or anything and not interrupt her doing her stuff and be able to put out more content because that would that's the biggest obstacle for me is being able to shoot quietly you know in a quiet area uh and and do it on a regular basis because it's tough for me to do so if i could then i'd put out more video content and maybe give nate a run for his money with his tens of hundreds of thousands of of uh viewers you guys are so ambitious yeah, look at you. Four for <laughs> Kevin's the only one with the right answer. Well, no, hey, hey, the right <laughs> answer right there is getting in on Bitcoin when it was only a couple hundred bucks or something. No. Now it's like over 50 grand of Bitcoin. It's <laughs> No, no, no. It's not shilling to want to do well, to want to succeed and, oh, and prosper. Okay. Let, let's change that. You guys want to be it's, very well. It's shilling <laughs> if you only put out positive reviews just because they sent you something or paid you something. And I've mm -hmm. told every designer I won't say something positive unless I, you know, mean it. So right. if you send me something, I'm going to say what I honestly think about it. Or you can do the old, you know, I feel victimized today. Why don't you give me money to my Patreon? My feeling got hurt. Please help. Didn't you oh, guys and, actually and by have? By the way, when, when when you guys go out to buy uh, war games, please make sure that you get them from Miniature Market. Yeah, they, there's the shell. <laughs> why? Why would that be, Rob? <laughs> Sponsor of Rob's Tabletop. <laughs> oh, they have a big sale tomorrow. You're going to want to check out my video, by the way. Okay. Nice. Um, that's shilling, bro. <laughs> and not being shy about it. No, there, I don't see anything wrong with pushing a company or a store or something like that. Oh, no, no, no. My, no that's uh, what we're here for, to yeah. help them out. Yeah, I push my yeah. local game store, Gamers Armory, all the time. I tell anyone right, who's right. in the yeah. area to shop there. Yeah, to get the plug in, right? It, it, you know, I, I think where it becomes a problem is, you know, I've, I've built a, a, a relationship w with, the, with the people, and you guys have as well, Okay. Uh, as far as with the people that, that, you know, lock and load or whatever, you know, whoever, 
Okay. Um, and the same thing with, with, with my sponsor, because when he picked me up, I only had about 1500 subscribers. So we grew together and it became personal, personal in the fact that we wanted to win and right. we're winning now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I tell you, I, I believe the miniature market's the best, I'm not saying it because, you know, they're paying me millions and millions of dollars. I'm telling you because I really believe it. The, and where, you know, I don't believe that you, oh, go ahead. What they're Maybe. doing works. Cause it's kind of like what David is doing. Right. So when yeah. I go on their website it and I personal, yeah, I, I'm looking at a game that I'm interested. I scroll down a little bit and there's Rob's video. I'm like, okay. So uh -huh. if I want to see uh -huh. what this game looks like. I can click on it and see exactly what the hell I'm buying. I think that's an excellent idea. That's smart of them to do that. The yeah. difference between a lot, a lot of these other guys is I'm not afraid to tell them, eh, you want to know something? Here's the sale going on. You're not going to want to get this stuff in the sale. You're going to want to get this stuff because I really like this stuff. That's what I think. That's cool. Okay. And I have the freedom to do that because the minute, you know, like, uh, like a lot of, uh, I mean, board gaming creators have become, become a joke basically. Okay. It's about this. And it's not about the games anymore. It's far from it. Where you guys, I really believe, stay true to it. Okay, we talked about you know another uh, another channel. They're about this, right? And how far they can go. And they lose the sight of what the game is. Okay, how mm -hmm. many of those things you, have you seen? And you come away and you go, well, I didn't get anything from that. Yeah. I'll watch your video, I'll watch your video, and I'll watch your video. But I'm getting in the box. I'll understand how to play it. And if it's massive, I'm really going to stay and, 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 and watch it and get a good feel for what I need to learn and how I can progress with it. All right. Okay? That's all here. And that's yeah. done out of passion, not out of this. Right. Now, listen, we all love money, okay? That's how we take care of our lives, our families, buy things for our, our, our hobby and all that other stuff, okay? But when you start going, well, this is a great game, you've got to get it, and you don't believe it, people are going to eventually figure it out. Yeah. Too true. They're going to figure it out because you can only hawk so much crap. Yeah, it only takes the one time. One time. Huh? You take one time and shill for something that's bad and people go buy it and like, well, You're this done. is garbage. This is not what he said it was. They'll never yep. trust you again. Yeah, well, well exactly. but you also have to remember when you if you shill for something bad, it's got to be like the game is totally broken out of the box. And we've seen games like that. We've all talked about games like that, that like the rules are just really bad. The game right. itself, you, it's unplayable. And you're sitting there going, this is a great game. It's a great system. I really love it. It's innovative. It's like, then you obviously didn't play the game. You kind of maybe scanned the rules, hit a couple phrases through that in your video as buzzwords and talked about it, and you're full of shit. You're not really mm -hmm. saying anything real, mm -hmm. and that's wrong because at that point, like like Nate just said, people are going to say, dude, you didn't even play that game. I'm not trusting you ever again because there's a difference between that and this is a really great game, and then somebody else gets it and goes, I, I, I didn't like it. I mean, there's games that people love all the time. They say it's the greatest thing ever, and I'm sitting there going, "It doesn't click for me. It doesn't do it for and me." I think, I think, uh, I think, people who watch us find that they like similar games to, to what we like, so they trust my opinion on X. They trust Nate's opinion on Y. They don't listen to Mo. That, that's just kind of how. You know. Never listen to Mo. Never listen to Mo. <laughs> I think the ones I think people get accustomed to it and they can tell who's actually played the game and yeah. who just pulled it open, thumbed through like Mo said, and then threw together a video. I think they can tell rather quickly who's falling in what category. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and, and there's a lot of them out there. There's a lot of them out there. And then yep. and then, you know, it, it, you know, you see these guys that that really put a lot of time into it. And it's such a, it's such a weird business, okay? And I know I'm getting off the uh, subject a little bit, but it's a weird business because you know I've seen people do certain war games where they have taken it 
from point A all the way to the very end, but they've got the personality of a rock. Okay. Right. And nobody can relate to it. So there has to be this incredible balance to be yeah. able to do this. Yeah. It's not yeah. for the weak of heart because you are going to get kicked in the. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, shoot. You know, you're going to get yeah. kicked and, and 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 you know, people are just not going to like it because they don't like the way you look. Yeah. Hey man, uh, I was never that <laughs> remark. Yeah. No, I I think there's a there is a fine line and and you kind of kind of you got to get up there, have a go at it, see how it goes for you, and if it doesn't work out and you you don't like what you're doing, then stop, right? I, I there's no but if you like what you're doing and you don't care what everyone's saying, then carry on. I, I didn't, mm -hmm. I cared when I first started and then I realized that most people weren't, you know, very nice. And so I just did my stuff and waited for the nice people to turn up. And now there's four of them here and you three guys and we're good. So there's that, right? But mm -hmm. just to do one little quick shill, I am starting a series of interviews with uh, YouTubers that have under a, th uh, under a thousand subscribers. So trying to, I'm going to do a live stream with these guys and chat, chat to them. You know, why are you doing this? Who are you? What's going on? And all that sort of fun stuff. Because I think that's my way of trying to give back a little bit to promote those guys and get their voice heard. And, and then if they're as thick as a rock or dumb as a rock, we can ignore them. Or if they're, if they're awesome, then we can subscribe to them, right? Because there's a lot of hidden talent. And, I, and you know, I've done yep. some things like that and I've, I've really pushed a, you know, uh, a, a lot of channels that I really believed in because I believed that they were doing it from their heart, not right. for the dollar, you know, you know, I, I left the situation because it was all about the dollar, which Kevin, you kind of worked right into our next thing. If you had to give one piece of advice to somebody, a new creator, what would it be? Hmm. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, think, I finally, I finally got him to stop. I'm really talking. trying to work and, and try to show that you guys may have some talent here. Oh uh, God, that's so funny. Uh, shit. Uh, uh, I think that I think that the best thing to do is if you're passionate about it and you enjoy, you enjoy it, then get after it and have fun. Mm -hmm. But if you're treating it, if it's too, if it's too much like a job and you're expecting to make a lot of money out of this, you're probably not going to. And for God's sake, don't overinvest in equipment and lights and technology until you know what the hell you're doing. No, you can do it, Rob. You you've got you got you have investors in bankroll. Like I, I feel Man, I feel I don't my, make I I don't make money. I pose for money, mother. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That is a true statement right there, Tony. Well, it's got I a do. great face for radio. I do. Oh, God, that's perfect. Anyway, <laughs> that's my advice right there. Do it if you love it. Otherwise, shut up and l let the rest of us have the subs. <laughs> Mo, same question. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> what why, advice? Why, why, this is why we're awesome. No, you know, they asked me to come the, out here to bring a little life to the show and... <laughs> Oh, the, advice, okay. the advice I would give to anyone who's a new YouTuber is the same thing I would give to a new Wargamer. Um, I honestly give the same thing to a new Wargamer. If you enjoy it, do it. And don't let anybody hold you back, ever. And if you're not sure what to do, ask questions. Yeah. None of us are big, you know, hoity-toity, well, most of us are not. There, there may be a couple, but I can't talk to every, uh, for everybody. But anybody is willing to help you out pretty much yeah. the wargaming community is one of the most welcoming communities I've ever been in. If you have a question and it's a legit question, obviously you have to time it, right? You can't be at a convention when someone's in the middle of a big move and they're figuring odds and they got giant killer stacks, you don't go, Hey, how do you play this game? <laughs> it's not going to work. Uh, but if you ask them an honest question say, Hey, what's a good game for me to get started? What do you think I should get? You know, what, what do you think right. I should do for YouTube? People right. are going to sit down and they're going to give you every bit of advice that they can give you from their own mistakes and their own successes. Yeah. They're going to try to save you time That's by saying, Hey, don't do this because I did it. And I, it wasted so much of my time. You know, I, I, I spent money on this garbage and it's, you know, bad camera, bad equipment, whatever, get this instead, save yourself some money. 
go do this, talk to this publisher, talk to that publisher, things like that. Watch these YouTube channels and see what they do and kind of get a sense of that and see if you can get on some other YouTube channels and, and talk to people and expose yourself because that's one of the things we do Whiskey Charlie for is to expose people to different publishers, designers, and content creators uh, because we want everybody to succeed because when everyone succeeds, we all succeed. You know, it's just mm -hmm. more fun for everyone. Mo. I'm yes. going to go to Nate now. Oh. <laughs> uh, I would say to take things slowly and not get a big head about it. And what I mean by that is I've talked to some people before who've uh, had the idea that you get into it and then all of a sudden people start sending you stuff. So I'd say don't get too eager. Kind of do your own thing for a little while and then once you hit a point you'll start finding that people will reach out to you, that companies will start reaching out to you. If you're covering stuff in a certain way that people like, you'll get responses. Pay attention to the criticism, the the useful criticism, because it's the internet, so some people are just jackasses. But if you get useful criticism, like lighting or sound or cover this or cover this in this way, or we don't like it when you do X or we do like it when you do Y, Pay attention to that stuff and kind of steer yourself accordingly as you uh, as you kind of grow your channel. You know, take it slow mm -hmm. and let it grow naturally, rather than trying to to force things to happen. Because people can tell, I think that difference. I made that mistake when I first started. I tried to jam it as hard as I could and you made, made a few mistakes. On? What's that? You put your special voice on. Hello and welcome to Nate. Hello and yes. welcome to Whiskey Charlie. <laughs> Whiskey Charlie, Gimpy Gamer. Grew my July. special beard for it. Hey everybody, it's your favorite Gimp of the Limp. It's Nate Rogers. <laughs> I am not that bad. No, I'm just goofing. No, no, no. <laughs> but yeah, that would you be know, my just, advice. Just to, just to close this out, the best thing I can ever say is, Never go on another guy's stream and start saying, "Hey, I I started a YouTube channel. You guys need to come over to and disrupt somebody." Nothing gets under my skin more than that. Did you have people you do that? Help, oh, all, all, all the time. And then really? I'll stop the stream and I'll say, "You're an idiot. <laughs> You're an idiot." Okay, because I can never do that. I, I even hate you know. Like, there's a couple people that go live and I'll watch them and I won't say anything. And if I say something or I ask a question, all of a sudden people go, oh, it's Rob. And it's taken away from the guy that's busting his back end right? from doing what he's trying to do. And I hate, and I'm not there to try to get people to come over my channel. All I want to do is watch and, and, and absorb something and, and go, oh, hey, you know, that game looks really interesting. I, I'd love to check that out, you know, that kind of thing. And it's a big thing. If they want help, Send me an email. I'll have you come in, and I'll be more than happy to help you if you're a good person. Oh, uh, okay, oh, is, never is mind. The mighty Kabuki here. I, I, I was you wondering over this channel. You don't go saying hi to Mo first. I was wondering if I was being called Gumpy at first on purpose, or if that was a mistype. <laughs> gumpy. Who called you Gumpy? Uh, Kabuki. Gumpy. Wow. She said, "Hey, Kevin Gumpy. Hi, all." And then she oh, went Gumpy too. Gum Gumpy. <laughs> All right, here's one that might stir a little emotion from some of our audience. Grugnargs, whatever the hell you call yourselves, okay? Do you think they help or hurt the hobby? They are the hobby. Grognards? Okay. okay. I mean, wargamers are considered grognards. Okay. And I think everybody who's a wargamer kind of wears that title with pride you know it's it's just the slang term that we all use for ourselves and everybody okay. uses for us okay so the hardcore grugna is at a convention okay mm -hmm. you got a bunch of new kids i've seen this happen numerous times okay and mm -hmm. i've seen where you know they decide to run the table if you don't understand this game just get the hell out of here you know, yeah, that's from, from the simplest of miniature games. And I find that that when I run into them, and I'm going to give you guys examples, and then I, I want everybody's opinion of this, okay? 
you know, people for for 40 years have said that this this type of gaming is dying. It's the biggest lie in the world. <laughs> okay, and that it's all going to die out with the with the, the the last of whoever. But you got new people, and 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 here you are in the age, the golden age of board gaming right now. There is no time where things are produced better. Mm -hmm. There is no time where there are more games that you can get your hands on. And, you know, back in the 70s, and Kevin will uh, attest to this instead of you two youngins up there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, all right? Uh, hey, all right, all right. But anyways, there were a lot of games produced in the 70s, okay? But the quality and the amount and the companies that are out there now today there's never been more war games made. Mm. So you should be embracing these people. I don't find that the true hardcore grognards do that. And I think they heard it. Mm. For a majority of them heard it. So, and, I, I, and that's why I'm asking this question. Yeah. So mm -hmm. again, I want you to go around the table and I want you, I want to get your opinion of what I just said. Go ahead. Who Mo. wants to start? Go to Mo first. Yeah. Okay. I'll start. Um, I think, well, first off, I'm going to start out with what Herman said. He said, elitist, grumpy, and anti antisocial grognards are the problem. Unfortunately, there are plenty of them still around. I would not say uh, there are plenty there. One is too many. That would be plenty. Uh, there are people like that. And I ran into them in battle tech a lot. There are like the rules lawyer types that instead of teaching, I'll come you, back to that battle tech thing because I'm going to give you a great example of that. <laughs> you know, they they these people live and breathe and, and just sleep this damn game. They know the rules, and instead of embracing you and saying, "Hey, I've got this mech or I've got this tank out there, and it's got this weapon on it, and this it's capable of doing this much damage," do you really want to go up against that? Instead of trying to teach you. They just go and they just now watch this. I'm going to crush you. Yeah, I won. It's like, yeah, you won. What did you win? You know, you don't win any money. You don't win any respect. And that's the most important thing is you don't win respect. And if you don't win people's respect, no one's going to want to deal with you. No one's going to want to play with you. And you are doing more of a disservice to your hobby than you are a service. And the people that do, like you say, like, you better know the game at my table. It's like, well, jackass, get the hell out of this convention because this is not a competition here go over to the competitive hall if you want to be like that this is supposed to be about bringing people into not pushing them away from the hobby and those are the type of people that i would definitely not waste any time going up to them and saying chill out or just leave you know just don't have time for that here in the hobby okay go ahead, I, i'll jump in uh i i get what you're saying right the grognard thing mm -hmm. but i think the type of person you're talking about exists in every gaming forum okay and you're Actually, you're seeing yeah. you're seeing them in in elite war elitist war gamers, and that's fine. But as an example, this is an experience I had uh, with X Wing. I even made a video okay. talking about this called "Don't Be That Guy," right? And there are two guys I can think of specifically off the top of my head. Uh, one guy no one liked to play with at my local store because he was a very sore loser and didn't welcome in the new people wouldn't help him to learn the game, wouldn't be kind and sociable. He was the type that would, if a new player was there with his starter ships, instead of kind of taking it easy and walking him through, letting him learn from some mistakes, he would go out of his way to crush him just so he could feel like he won. And the time he was beat by a young kid who was like 9 or 10 at the time, it was in a tournament, <laughs> dude gets beat, and he packs up his stuff and just goes home. He's like, all right, I'm done. And I had another guy that pulled this crap, and I was actually playing him at a tournament. Real big tournament, the uh, Crate Cup that they have. God, I love that tournament. The guys did a great job. And I was playing this gentleman, and he flew right into a trap. Playing a couple of thermal mines, and he flew his ace pilot right into it. And he got so mad, he took his plastic template and smashed it into the table, and it goes flying. And I'm like, dude, really? Like, do I have to get a... T.O. over here to rule on this because you're being a dick. And I, I stomp him at that point, but he had pretty much given up on the match. But he had that just dick elitist attitude like, oh, I can't believe this 
guy, you know, beat me. Well, this guy made a channel and talked about you being an asshole, so welcome to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to run into these people no matter the game, right? So I don't think oh, that yeah. these people are keeping anyone out of war gaming. These people are going to keep people out of RPGs, out of uh, right. tabletop games, right. out of any game. Mm -hmm. They just exist. Yeah. Okay, and I'll come back to that, but I want to hear what Kev has to say as well before uh, I, 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 I don't know. I have too much to say about it. I, I think there's okay. gatekeepers, gatekeepers in every group, but, yeah. but the the word gatekeeper is being overused in our hobby right now, and it's being used to to pander to others. So everyone I know wants to get more war gamers in and more historical gamers in and, and, and more conflict simulation war gamers in. And I, we all do what we can to try and you know, uh, reel those folks in to play games. But if we keep, if we pretend that there are these artificial barriers, I think we're making a mistake. So uh, I think the grog, the, the, the crank, the cranky, the cranky, the cranky grognar is a thing, yeah. but but you know that we, we just got to call them out. If someone's been a yeah. dick, I'll tell them. It's, it's all mm -hmm. good, whether it's digital or face to face. So don't be a dick. Yeah. Be kind, right? Let's try and get people in, not out. Yeah, exactly. And and the, and, and and listen, I've seen it in every in, in my entire thing. The battle tech thing. I'm going to come come back to that. Uh, you remember Mech Warrior, the click yeah. one? Yeah. Okay. Click tech. Yeah. Well. Back in the day, WizKids had asked me, um, because I was up in Connecticut, as a matter of fact, and there was a convention, and I was running a little event for kids. It was kind of like a starter thing to get them into, you know, you start here, and then you can work your way to battle battle tech. Some kid comes walking by and started calling the thing uh, an abomination, because he was going over to play in some battle tech uh, competition. Mm. And here you got, you, you know seven eight year old kids and you're calling a game an abomination i mean how stupid is that i like to say that the the snow that day turned a little red <laughs> nice but i can't really say say that can i because it's family art. another situation magic perfect thing oh you know that that is the most cutthroat thing in the world okay yeah. okay but never have I seen, I've been to many, many, many conventions, okay? And I've seen more than anything, the older guy, when you've got these younger kids that, that are just fascinated by, every kid loves tanks. Mm -hmm. Okay? Every kid loves tanks starting off. And if you can't embrace these kids and bring them in, and every convention, there's three or four of them, where I might have, like I just mentioned, just two events. I've had events, but not as much as I've had right. in the war game community. It's almost like it's an indie band. And they start to get a little popular, and they don't... Wait a minute, you can't like this band. This is my band. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, wait, they got a hit song? I don't want... Well, no, that's not the same... same yeah band i went and i saw at, at this little bar now they're playing stadiums uh oh uh, uh. well i mean you know, the, what i was gonna say is when you're like right. that like you were you were saying about kids you know loving tanks if you were running an event at, at some you know convention or a local demo or something like that and kids want to come up the first thing you need to do is set them up to succeed you throw the situation you put that you put yourself into an impossible win situation let them blow you up let them walk away with a tank you know you give them something and they remember that they'll remember that 5 10 20 years later and they'll say that's the guy who got me into war games yeah. and yeah. now in fairness i've also seen that too mm -hmm. okay yeah. yeah i've seen a lot of good war gaming people okay they're, yeah. they're out there i'm looking at three of them right now well, well, when when I was fifteen or sixteen, I painted up some little airfix Napoleonic minis, and I mm -hmm. proudly took them over to the. I found a club, you know, uh, in the, I guess it was in the phone book or on a newsletter or something. Got roll in there, walking, got my little French French 
guard guard or whatever they were line fellas and i said so can i play and they let the that wrong uniforms wrong shit get out mm. come back when you get it right haven't oh, touched a mini since <laughs> I don't, that was four thousand years ago rob do you <laughs> notice more of that do you have you seen more of that elitist attitude in wargaming versus other types because i just yeah, i haven't seen it that's why I'm bringing it up. Yeah, that's curious. I haven't seen it in board war gaming. I, I've been to small conventions, small war gaming conventions, where, you know, whether it's it's a younger kid or it's someone, you know, in their 30s, early 40s that was brave enough to come to this, this, this foreign thing and were fascinated by it, just be completely shunned. You know, a lot mm. of these, a lot of these, a lot of these people call themselves garrisons. Okay, uh, we have a garrison here, and, and and I doubt they'll ever see this. Uh, it's the Ocala garrison. All right, the guy that runs it, pretty nice guy. I went and played, and uh, you know, the, to kind of play with them a bit, and this is going back about nine nine years ago or so, and the personalities were so. You know, the games were so personal and, and, and things like that. And I'm like, what the what the hell? That eventually, I just never went back. And then we have a Jacksonville garrison, which was kind of almost like the, the same thing. They, they, they form these little groups. Yeah. And they just want to drink beer and play games, which there's nothing wrong with that. But they're not when people come up in these conventions and you know they all got the same shirts on to represent whatever they are and people want to learn why are you running a game if you're not going to teach somebody the, the game exactly yeah. exactly that's just really odd to me i i'll be that, in, there's a game store in town oh i'm sorry i'll just we're, we're oh, no, go ahead. In town and my buddy and I will be playing and, and folks will come over and go, well, well, well what is this? And we'll say, well, pull up a chair and we'll tell you all about it, right? I, I mean, right. How hard is that? And after a while, they get up and leave because they realize you're trying to do your thing. So, mm -hmm. you, but you've at least introduced them to something. Anyway, mm -hmm. that's what I said. Yeah. No, that's a great point. And you can always say if, if you start getting the interest of the person, like if it's a couple, uh, a guy and his wife are there and, and they're sitting down and the wife is sitting there going, yeah, this isn't my thing, you know, which generally right. is the case in my experience. Uh, but they'll say, you know what, well, I'm going to go look around. Why don't you sit here, honey, and, and watch? And Because the, the husband might be digging it, you know, and then you say, yeah, this is pretty cool. Wow, this is really cool. Yep, you can get it right over there. It's right on that shelf right there. We're here every Saturday. You know, feel free to stop on by anytime if you want here, you want to exchange numbers or something like that. And we'll let you know or meet us on Facebook in our group or whatever, mm -hmm. because everyone wants to recruit more people in because no one wants to push people away because the more people you bring in, the more people you can play with. And why wouldn't you want to do that? It just seems, you know, silly. Yeah. Now, well, especially them when they're noobs, you can beat them. <laughs> oh, oh. But the, the other thing, too, is when it comes to the gaming overall being I haven't been on both sides I, I walked away from the hobby gaming side altogether and, you know I used to just stay with war I mean I, war games was my thing but hobby gaming has become so toxic I don't want anything to do with it anymore it's very clickish and elitist and <laughs> I just I don't want to deal with it anymore and war gaming is the complete opposite which is fantastic the number one rule of my channel is we're just going to put we're, we're no cult of the new okay i'm not going to play anything new just to be to put it up there and try to race anybody and like kev i agree with you kev 100 percent. i'm going to play what i want to play it may not be what everybody else wants to see right but i'm going to pull it out and i'm going to have a good time why i'll tell you a couple of reasons why because if i'm not enjoying myself guess what you're going to see that on camera and you're going to go, why am I watching this? This isn't fun at all. One Pip Wonder, another great smaller channel. You should get her on the channel. What, a, what an amazing girl this is, by the way. But but I, I, I want to reach back because at one point, listen, I always loved war games, and it was always Dungeons and & Dragons and other things as well. What really set me 
and really made a difference was probably one of the greatest grognards of all time. Okay, you guys remember the G W uh, G W uh, G D W games, the Europa series. Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay, there was a guy in Connecticut. He was out of Manchester, and the name of the store was Fathers and Sons. I'm going to tell you a little story. I went in there and I would get some of my Warhammer stuff and, and things there, but he had, he was, he, he used to write, uh, Gary Stagnetto. I don't know if you guys heard of him. He used to write for Europa magazine and he was one of the big key influences on Europa. And if you're, if you know anything about Europa, everybody's always wondering why Grand Europa never came because all these games were supposed to make one giant game that probably would take up this entire studio if you laid out all the maps. Mm. Okay, it was just monsters. And it's such a complicated game. He took the time and would take little battles to show me because you like war games? I go, yeah, but I'm not I'm not a really big war gamer. And he got me to get the bug because he took the time in the middle of a store to sit there and explain everything to me. Hmm. And I would go there and get lessons on how to play this game. I have, I I still have that collection. I will never part with it because it means so much to me. That's cool. The thing is I went there to to do another lesson because we were just getting into second front, which had just came out. And uh, I was leaving the store. His son had just came in and he started playing with his son and he just had this little battle, a little group versus, you know, and the map, the, the map was monstrous, but he's just taking like this little part, Sicily, mm-hmm. this little battle with his son. His son was, had to be about six, seven, and he's teaching his, <laughs> his kid to be like him. I looked back as I was walking out, I walked across the street. I remember it was snowing and I had to get home. I lived about an hour from there and I saw him playing his son and he went, I went home, fathers and sons, right? It was the last time I saw him. He died of a massive heart attack that very next day. Uh, and I will always remember him for taking the time and the passion that he had for war gaming. Mm-hmm. And that always stuck with me. And I said, you know something? In this business, I don't care what it takes. I'm going to take the time, whether I get it wrong or right, to open up my, my room here. This is why I do a lot of this. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to think of him every once in a while. And I'm going to show off these things. And I'm going to, uh, uh, hopefully I inspire somebody to play one of these things. Mm-hmm. What more could you want in life? Yep. I, I think that some of us might almost have a little bit of a, a bias experience from what you're talking about, Rob. Because when I mm-hmm. got involved with this, Right, I'm coming at it from a different angle because of the the channel, and a lot of people knew who I was. So if I was asking to sit down and have someone explain something to me, they might have been more willing because of the channel, the camera, whatever the because case. Because you're a big deal. Yeah. So well, yeah. small deal, but <laughs> yeah, mic drop. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying, like. I never had that experience when I first got started of anyone saying, no, I'm not going to take the time to teach you, or I don't want to tell you about this game. Whoever I asked, Mm -hmm. they were more than welcoming. So that's been Mm -hmm. my experience. Everyone Mm -hmm. was welcoming when it came to wargaming. I just never ran into the the elitism of, I don't have time for you. I really think it's a problem. To some degree, you, you don't have that problem now because everything going on in the world we're not going to say what it is but Hmm. you know with everything going on you've had to learn to do this yourself or or possibly have somebody that that you can trust come me i live out with alligators snakes um swamp and me and a bunch of games that's it so you know they have houses now right you don't have to live with the alligators and the snakes anymore in the swamp what's that you know they have houses now. You can live in one of those instead of living in the swamp. Nah, with the bro, I'm hardcore. <laughs> I'm army. I'm hardcore. Right, here we go. You know, okay, here, here comes the gratuitous uh, marine moment. Go ahead. No. And now. I mean, we can, I can just say aren't really marine yet if it'll make you feel better. <laughs> you're always a marine. If you're ever in a marine, if you're ever a marine, you're always a marine. You're just not an active marine. <laughs> 
Um, and we made the old man lose his train of thought. Yeah, no. Uh, what, what I was I was talking That's about army for you. What, what I'm saying is that there is a yeah. How old I am old? Okay, every se- I die a little bit every second. <laughs> we all do. It's true. Um, but but you know, solo gaming is a lot more prevalent right now. Mm-hmm. And and all three of us here, you know, one of our big things is is that we show things off without any uh, other people you know once in a while i'll have my son if i if, if i can but you know hey watch the army jams whoa 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 i am army buddy i still am so he was nom, talking nom, about nom. my jab oh <laughs> feed him some crayons i knew it was going to take him nom, a sec nom, to nom. get it <laughs> crayola yeah. baby Fresh. Uh, <laughs> um, like I said, we're, we're, we're very much solo. We, we have to be solo gamers because yeah. basically we're talking into a camera. We're showing things off. We're constantly learning how to do things and shut one side of our brain off and play another side of a two-player game a lot of times. Mm-hmm. So, you, you know, it's... Well, you can it, tell. It, um, you can tell solo has exploded, especially if you look at Kickstarter, because almost every oh, Kickstarter now oh, yeah. has solo rules, or the solo rules are part of the stretch goals, whatever it is. Almost all of them now say one to five, one to four, one to six, whatever amount of players. You don't see too many now that say two and up when it comes to the players, especially well, within I the mean, last to go, year. To go one further. The Arcadia Quest, which is an award game, but it was a game that was a PvP game. Mm-hmm. They came out, cool mini or not, come out with solo rules to just try to keep things, you know, people are now in, implementing solo rules. Yeah, but you if, can't if get that game. we're not inventing them ourselves. Huh? You can't get that game. Yes, you can. You can go over to the miniature market right now. They're having a huge sale, 70% off. The expansions uh, or like the, the the base pack? I thought like the starter pack chill, was like baby. sold no, out and been sold ba- up. No, they had base packs and everything. You're sharing your commission on all these sales that come off this, uh, right? The only, my, the only commission and joy I get is watching certain people burn. Uh, <laughs> burn, burn, baby, yeah. burn. Army guy shutting off one side of his brain. There's a joke there somewhere. Trap. Trevor, my brother. Army, Navy, Marines, you all look the same from... 3,000 3, feet. I guess we can tell who's... Man it, 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 yeah. Are you telling me that's Air Force guy? Yep, there's the chair force. Force. Wa- Air Force. He's, he's, probably, he's probably got a silk uh, silk jumpsuit, so no doubt. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe he's Space Force. Is he going to take, take off his shirt and play volleyball with a bunch of guys? <laughs> Come on, Jeez. the Air Force gets all those Worst amenities, ever. like housing and air conditioning and food, stuff the Marines don't get. Well, I mean, it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's it really easy to run run from a fight in a plane. Yeah, true story. <laughs> uh, Air Force. Are we my, done yet? Oh, by the way, my alarm is due. <laughs> it the should be dropping it off. What's dropping off? His uh, the Air Force usually drops off my laundry. <laughs> <laughs> I like the nice crease. Kev's like, I don't know where I can throw a joke in here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, jeez. Where, where are we at? Hour and a half? Yeah, we yeah. got time. All right, I'm going to give you back your show. I do have one last question I think Uh-oh. I'm going to throw in here. Saves the best for last. Okay. I'm going to ask you guys. Herman Lutton. <laughs> exactly. Bingo. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> By the way, have you seen his latest offering in Magnificent Style? The, oh, yeah. The redo yeah. of it? Redo, yeah. How yeah, beautiful. Oh, it, yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. Just got it in? Oh, uh, just, just, just. Uh, I'm, I'm completely. And, and, and out of all his games, that's the one game I never played. Oh, wow. That's the one game I never played. And everybody kept on going, hey, Crowbar is like in Magnificent Style. I'm like, okay. It didn't register. So this comes out. I take a look at it. 
I love that game. Nice. Absolutely love the game. That's awesome. Really, really enjoyable. Very I'm enjoyable. Hoping, I'm hoping you get a free copy soon, Herman. <laughs> Herman, I mean, jeez. It's Kevin. Come on now. Jeez. Uh, Worthington. Right. Did, oh, now here he goes. Now, now he's pumping it up. Worthington did a wonderful job. Thanks. No, it, 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 it's something special. And I really suggest that you guys uh, pick that up either at Worthington Publishing or you can check it out. It's coming soon to Miniature Market where you, <laughs> with the lowest prices out there. <laughs> I'm phasing out of existence. All right, in, all, in all seriousness, oh, let's start with you, Nate. Of all the war games, what is your favorite period? The favorite game that I've ever played? No, oh, period. Period. Like a, that's like a, like, World War Two, World War One. Oh, time frame. Uh, time frame. Period. He's a Marine. Dude. What time? Yeah, I'm, I'm period. Sorry. Uh, I, I get it now. Thank you. I had to. Think, Hi, oh, because I. Thank I God hate this your wife's question. on the panel. Just, just the IQ okay. went up to about seven. Yeah. You know, at least the one seventy-five now. I would have to say, oh God, it sounds so cliche, but. Either, God, I'm going to lean towards Ancients just because I like the whole sword and shield and galleys and all the other crap just to be a little different. But World War II is my main focus just because there's so much. I mean, it's, oh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's inundated everywhere. But the <clears throat> one that I've always enjoyed is like the Great Battles of History series, GMT, you know, Alexander and the Hoplites. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always wanted to get their game galley i think is the name of it i haven't been able to find that one at uh, a decent price i had a chance to get it for like 40 bucks once and missed it and it really drove me nuts but yeah that mm -hmm. the the time period when war involved like really getting stuck in like sticking the metal into the other guy just fascinates me i like that time period for some reason thanks for sharing that detail wow yeah. thanks, thanks for bringing that well have I you ever like have you ever combat there's there's a distance you, uh... Let me ask you a quick uh, follow-up question with that, especially pertaining to ancients. Have you ever played DBA? Uh. -uh. Uh, Debellis? No. Uh. -uh. Um, it's a miniature game. It's almost like a, you can play it on like a one-foot square of felt, and what you have is, um, I believe it's eleven elements. So you pick a time period, like if you could have Romans versus Carthaginians or Romans versus. Whatever you want to do, Persians or this Spartans, definitely Spartans. Spartans, yeah, you could you could have them face the Spartans, and it's it's fifteen mil. So you have each element. You'll have spearmen, you'll have swordsmen, and you there's tournaments of it. Check it out. I, I, hmm. it's something you you'll be very fascinated. It's called DBA. DBA. Yeah. All right, I'll yeah. definitely have to check. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, right, Kev? Yeah. So night. So actually, night. Uh, a couple of viewers have sent me copies of rules and I have multiple copies. So why don't I send you a, a copy of the rules and then you can work out if you want to grab the minis and check it out. Is there a set of minis uh, specific I, I, for I the game? It, I... You just, you go to old foundry or whatever. <laughs> it's, it's very inexpensive to each army. I think Yeah, 12 bucks or something like that. Oh wow! And you bring in whatever armies you like, you, you, you put them on, I think it's a, uh, one inch by one and a half inch bases and and you paint them up yep. and and then you just have this there's tournaments at conventions there's it, it's it's really this it, it's a big thing it, but it's a very cult type of thing it sounds kind of like a ancients version of uh, x-wing or something like that you know like you're a little squad your um, your team Nah, it's a lot more strategic. I, I, I would, I would compare it more to chess than I would. Yeah. Would yeah, you agree it, with that, Kev? Yeah, it's and and I'm I've lit, I have a small set of figures and I've read the rules. I haven't and I've goofed with it a bit, but I haven't played, really played. So I, it, it's, it's like a great battles of history battle, Nate, is, is what you're playing. Same sort of scale, but just on a but shrunk down. So you can do a one foot by one foot, two foot by two foot. Uh, and each stand is X number of men, depending on what you're doing, right? Right, right. 
No, that exactly. sounds like something that would be right up my alley. I've never heard about it. I'll... It's a 50-year, Joe, Joe just said, it's a 50-year-old system. It, wow. it's, it's glorious. Well, it definitely yeah, has I'll longevity you, then. Nate, yeah. I'll send you a copy of the rules, bud. No, I appreciate Easy it, Easy to Jeff. learn, fun. It's something, it's something that would really be great on your channel. You would love it. Yeah. The Bellis Antiquitous. Yep. See, even Herman knows. Yeah, I'll definitely so check that definitely, out. Definitely, definitely huge. Same, same question, uh, Kev. Favorite yeah, time period. Yeah, so I'm torn between uh, ancient and and uh, hypothetical modern. So I'm a, I'm a bit of a hoe uh, for 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 everything, but uh, probably leaning lately towards uh, anything modern, anything post, uh, well, post World War Two. You know, so uh, I'm all over that. Mo, bring it home. Um, World War Two obviously is really popular for me. World War Two, it has to be East Front and Pacific. Uh, Pacific needs to be tactical. Um, but preferably even better than that. I like modern, uh, more modern, the better. And I don't have any problem with playing anything that's present day, uh, even could be ongoing. Uh, it doesn't bother me because I just look at it as it's a game. I'm here to learn about what's going on. And, you know, I don't need to have any separation from it. I know some people do, and I respect that. Uh, but me, I just like to see the what ifs and that could be hypothetical, like next war series we were talking about before things that haven't happened, but could. Uh, or stuff that is happening currently or has recently happened uh, really is what interests me the most. One last question I'm going to give you guys. What game are you guys most looking forward to that's coming out this year? Wow. Nate, start us off, Big Phil. Damn. Hold up, you have to come back to me because I'm having a brain fart and I'm trying to remember <laughs> the name of it. Mo, 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 mo. NATO. NATO, Cold you. War goes hot. Mm. NATO, the Cold War goes hot, is the one I'm most looking forward to this year and coming out coming out next month. All right, there we go. Chad, I have two because I can't. No, I can't. it's all right. <laughs> we'll take them. Okay, so uh, third winter OCS, Ooh. monster big ass East Front. You gotta have you gotta be excited about that action, right? And then uh, obviously, well, actually, maybe three. Uh, Storm, um, the next wall of War eighty five. Uh, mm -hmm. which I think might get out later this year if things go well and now I just had a brain fly oh Air and Armor from uh, Compass Games Bruce Maxwell Ooh, who by the way yeah, she'll, sure. I'll be interviewing Friday evening <laughs> <laughs> see that's what I like that's what I like get it in there Kev get it in there nice <laughs> alright alright I remember the name by Listen. the way oh go ahead because it uh, is Core Space my favorite miniatures game the Kickstarter, yeah, right the, over here. the newest oh, yeah, alien yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. uh, definitely top of my list because I think the course uh, course based system is so ingenious. Mm -hmm. You can use it with anything else. There's the uh, rules on BGG where you can incorporate the miniatures from Nemesis to have like a, <clears throat> an alien type game, or you can even yeah. use the aliens yeah. from mm -hmm. Aliens in it. Nice. So, yeah, love, 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 love that game system. What? And then, of course, the Thunder in the East uh, sequel. Are you guys are you guys excited about uh, Twilight 2000? Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Yeah, definitely. We're going to have to do a live play one night. I want to get my RPG on. I haven't done RPG in 20-something years. Listen, I, still I, got have 20, I got 27 cameras here. Yeah. <laughs> we can pull it off. We need to do that with Aliens. Aliens RPG and Twilight 2000. They b both are from uh, Free League Publishing. Yeah. There Let's do it. I would love to do that. I'm down. All right. Listen, I have taken over this this channel long enough. I brought enough class to this. And actually, we actually have people watching this stuff. <laughs> yeah, we've had more than four. This is awesome. <laughs> yes. Wow. <laughs> All it took was a big fella to come in, bring a little clout to the store. Okay. Now, Mo, I hope you learned something on how to host a show. Thank you so much. I really okay. did. I was glad to come here and teach you a little bit. <laughs> what I do want to say, though, is I want to thank our three unbelievable guests. All right. The mighty and fantastic Nate Rogers. What more can you say about a man like that? Kev, big heart, big brain. That's all I can say. Oh. You're fantastic. We love you. Mo. Jeez. Big mouth. <laughs> Mo, the only sexy. Th the, Mo, the only thing I can say is your wife called, 
And she told me, can you please get some conventions going so I could get him out of the house? <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. That would be great. And your humble host, the mighty Rob Orr, the Rob's Tabletop World, Warm Pieces, and many other exciting things that he never knows what he's going to do from one day to another. But he is sponsored by Miniature Market. <laughs> got to get that last shilling. I, I got to get that last shilling. <laughs> Listen, I want to thank everybody for having me on here. If you ever don't want me ever to come again, don't invite me. This is be the best thing for but it's always a great time. It's always great to see all of you guys. And uh, I'm going to give you back your show. I will see you guys soon. I, I talk to you personally, most of you, so uh, we will talk soon. But I've actually got to do some work business, the real work Ooh, that we can't talk about. So until next time. I will see you all soon. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. And you guys have been fantastic Good and job. very gracious. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Rob. for coming on, Rob. All right, guys. Catch you later. I can find Take out how easy. to get off. <laughs> X. You know what that means. <laughs> Rob's got to go hurt his wrist. <laughs> got to get that real work in. Oh, man. Uh, that was fun. That was fun. But, uh, yeah, we'll just we'll close it out here ourselves for the evening, too. Uh, really appreciate everybody tuning in tonight and uh, enjoying our uh, guest host tonight, Rob Warren from Rob's Tabletop World and also Miniature Market. Make sure you buy your games from Miniature Market. Buy from those guys. <laughs> We're like shilling everywhere tonight, just having oh, fun with God. it. You know what? It was, it was a good one. It was a let's, good Let's show. not invite him back. I, I, he made me nervous. <laughs> the next time we do a show, if he's on with us, I got to get a like sign to put behind me that says like Cool Stuff Inc. on it or something like that just to mess with oh, him. God. Oh, <laughs> that would be. Rob loves Cool Stuff Inc. Oh man, that would be funny though. But uh, now it was it was good stuff. And Manage Market are good people. They have good deals, and so does uh, uh, NWS, which somebody else had mentioned during the show, and uh, cool stuff. And yeah, it is nice to and, see him back because he got uh, he yeah. shut down for a little while, and then he came back. Yeah, no, it's great to see them back. And you know, uh, main thing is is uh, support any anybody you can, whether it's your local game store, your your online game store, or if it's uh, the publisher direct. Make sure you support them. And uh, somebody had said earlier to let them know, and I, I do appreciate that, and I agree with that, uh, To if you purchase a game that you kind of got the interest on from a content creator, mention the content creator's name, because that is not a bad idea. I'll let them know that, hey, I saw it on Nate's channel, I saw it on Kev's channel, I saw it on Mo's channel, whatever, and that's what got me to buy this. Uh, I think that would be kind of neat, too, so that way they know that, hey, we're out here supporting them, and... Uh, they can see a direct result of uh, you know the videos that are, are put out, the information we're putting forth to people. And they can hopefully cool. get interested in buying games. So you know, I actually uh, had a Kickstarter one time contact me, and they're like, "Yeah, some of your subscribers asked us to send you a copy of the game because they want to see you cover it. So if you'll send us your address, we'll uh, we'll send it to you." And I'm like, "Sweet, sounds good." That's nice. And now I'm Very like, cool. okay, I got to create a few more fake email addresses so I can contact these Kickstarter companies. <laughs> <laughs> they have given me a good idea. That's great. So there you go. Rob is an undercover cop teaching kindergarten. <laughs> Why does that just sound wrong? That does. Well, matter. it's like kindergarten cop. Nah, he's Remember with uh, Schwarzenegger? It's not a yep. tumor. Exactly. Not a tumor. All right, gentlemen. But, uh, yeah, we'll call it a night here, guys. And I uh, really appreciate you guys uh, tuning in tonight. And obviously, always appreciate our uh, our co-hosts here tonight, Nate and Kev, as well as Rob, who is the host tonight, uh, having a little bit of fun and turning the tables and interviewing us instead of having us interview somebody else. But uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. And sorry it was late this, this month, but uh, weather no power things like that that kind of threw everything off last week <laughs> exactly. so hopefully we won't have what we see behind kevin right now hopefully we won't see that anymore no more lost power in texas <laughs> all right everybody have a great night and we will see you on the next episode good night <laughs>